So let's take a look at the 40k kits that real people are actually buying right now. What's actually selling well for Games Workshop? Hello and welcome back to All Specs Tactics, where today I thought I'd do a slightly different video to try and get a little bit of a snapshot of a look behind the scenes at Games Workshop using a little bit of data by proxy. Generally for Games Workshop they don't really tell us exactly how well they've done in terms of sales numbers for various different kits. I think you can usually guess units that might well be overall popular throughout the year. Maybe certain units that have notably sold out after a codex updated and they suddenly got good. Plus you can imagine that more popular armies will tend to sell more kits than less popular ones. One way to get a bit of information by proxy though, as mentioned, is to take a look at Games Workshop's discount retailers though. And for this video in particular, I asked my US affiliate partner Wargame Portal whether or not they mind me making a video featuring their best sellers in order, seeing which kits more commonly sell in greater numbers compared with other ones. I was really interested as to what sort of distribution they had going on between different armies and how much people tended to update things based on rules changes or codex releases. With that in mind for this video, I thought we'd go through 25 of their most popular selling kits in order. Pretty rapid fire, and maybe just have a few thoughts as to why the kit might be doing well compared with Games Workshop's rest of their range. I feel like the time period is going to be very sensitive as to what sells and what doesn't. This data is based on February to now, so around about two months worth of sales data. And spoiler alert, it does seem that the codexes that have released in 10th edition have generally driven sales. Space Marine Tyrannies, Dark Angels, Admech, Necrons and Tau all feature, whereas not all of the rest of the factions do. I guess codex releases are a big draw to getting people interested in the army. For the purposes of this one, I thought we'd focus on things that didn't actually release within the time frame as well. Anything that's a completely new model release is kind of just blown a bit out of proportion compared with the rest. I thought we'd talk through them at the end of the video in a separate small list, as I feel like it's not really a fair competition comparing them to the rest. I'm sure that at least a little of this data will be down to random chance, what people wound up in particular deciding to pick up at this store. But overall I feel like the list has some interesting trends, and the vast majority of the miniatures are ones that I could see why they're selling well. Just to say an absolutely massive thanks to Mac at Wargame Portal for allowing me to use the info for this. As mentioned, they're a wargame store in the USA, they typically give 15% off Warhammer kits. I signed up with them as an affiliate partner after you guys asked me to try and find somewhere like that in the USA to support the channel while buying some model kits, and in general I've had some pretty excellent feedback from them since then. For standout things compared with the rest of the discount retailers, they do have a particularly good website, slightly frighteningly good comms, and do generally take their discount duties seriously. 15% off most standard Warhammer kits in the USA, plus they also do around about 10% off the online only items that not all stores do. So as we'll see on the list a bit, they might be a little bit overrepresented here, things like land raiders or online only exclusive deals where these are one of the few places that discount them. As always, as with my other affiliate links on the channel, anything bought through these guys through the link in the video description does go to help support Auspex Tactics a bit at no additional cost. And a massive thank you to any of you guys who are ordering through that when you pick up Warhammer models. It really does help the channel out and keep the videos coming. Let's jump into the list proper though and fairly rapid fire go through the 25 best selling Warhammer 40k kits over the past couple of months. Ranked at 25 we've got the Honoured of the Chapter. This is definitely one that surprised me as it's kind of the I missed out on Indomitus sprue set. The one with the Judas Ear and the Blade Guard Ancient and the Monopose Blade Guard. If you took all the characters at Games Workshop face value for character prices, it does in theory offer a discount, though it's really not that many miniatures for the same price as a Combat Patrol. As I mentioned, I feel like this one might be overrepresented here, given that it's usually an online exclusive deal, so this is one of the few places that you can actually get it at a discount. In 24th, we've got the Tyranid Tyran effects, $60 or $51 at Wargame Portal. People seem to be keen to pick up the big bug battle tank. I do wonder if part of that temptation might be that it went down in points quite so much after it got that far unnecessary hike in the Tyranid Codex. Even at 190 points for $60 it does remain at one of the best points per dollar in the entire Tyranid range. I guess it is an older model but it is kind of hilarious how much different the price is compared with a newer Norn Emissary, which isn't really too dissimilar a size except it's standing up on its hind legs. I guess it's a dual build kit as well and can also build the Turvagon. I feel like Turvagons do just tend to be really quite popular models in more casual collectors, even if they aren't super strong in game outside of maybe an endless swarm at the moment. What's not to love about a great big alpha bug replenishing swarms of gaunts? In 23rd we've got the Black Templar Sword Brethren, $60 or $51 discounted. 
They're certainly a very meta unit at the moment, one of the best marine melee units full stop, and really quite a cool kit I think, with lots of different options and variant weapons. Compared with other space marine units, they're not too bad points per dollar for space marines as well. So I feel like they're kind of winning on multiple different fronts here. They're often running multiple Ulster Impulsors or maybe Land Raiders, often with Hellbrech leading the way. In 22nd we've got the Primaris Tech Marine, $40 or 34 discounters. Might be one that people are thinking about picking up to run in multiples if they want to play an Iron Storm Spearhead. In general it makes sense to have more than one of them to carry those Warlord traits about. Quite a fun model too I think, I have painted one of these myself. Coming out in 9th edition near Indomitus. In 21st we have the 8 Bound, $60 for 3 or 51 at Wargame Portal. They're the single most dangerous foot troops of the World Eaters right now, far scarier than Corn Berserkers or Terminators, even if they did go up in cost a bit. Seems that these guys were the most bought World Eaters kit out of any of them. I feel like they are kind of necessary for carrying your damage dealing quite a bit. They did have a big supply shortage of them for quite a long time. So it seems that Games Workshop have got over that and have come back into fairly good stock now. Maybe that's why they're suddenly more popular here. Another slight surprise for me were the Inquisitorial Agents. $55 or $47 for six fairly highly customizable Inquisitorial Miniatures. These guys I think were a little bit of a surprise to me to find on the list. The miniatures are really quite fun and I guess fairly recent. They've only been around since sort of like the middle of last year. I guess from 40k gameplay there might be a bit of incentive, given that they're really quite helpful to have in game at the moment, say for Imperial Knight lists. But I feel like lots of people just like to convert theirs. I guess if you do pick up one set of this box set, then if you have some spare leg parts from one place or another, you could convert a bunch more, and they might well have a bit of demand for people wanting to play them for Kill Team as well. Can't say I know much about their performance in that game system, but I guess that's two ways that people might want to pick them up for. In at 19th, we're back to the Tyranids, and the Harrisbex and Exocrine maybe isn't too surprising to see. $80 or $68 at Wargame Portal. I feel like both the Exocrine and the Harrisbex are kind of tempting for Tyranid players at the moment. The Exocrine is really just nice and easy to use as a big gun turret, and it really does seem to appear in the majority of Tyranids' lists. They don't have all that many options for efficient damage dealers. The Harrisbex isn't played quite as much at the top end of Competitive, though its melee stats I still think are kind of standout good for the cost seeming to get both a sweep and a strike profile. I genuinely wonder if that was a printing error originally from Games Workshop that they just kind of went with, when it turned out that the Harrisbex wasn't overpowered with that. Again, these have definitely had supply shortages when the Tyranids launched. Loads of Tyranid kits went out of stock, particularly the big dangerous ones, so again, maybe it's a bit of counterbalance from that. Next up, placing 18th, we've got the Chaos Land Raider, $90 or 81 at Wargame Portal. Again, this one's one of the online-only sets, so isn't usually available at discount elsewhere. Land Raiders definitely seem to be in vogue this edition, having got actually usable rules, which is kind of refreshing. The Chaos ones maybe not quite as often seen commonly on the tournament tables, but they can still deliver some scary melee at range, and have some pretty dangerous damage with their dark packs as well. Again, just Land Raiders in general were short on supply around the launch of 10th, and Games Workshop seem to be only just catching up now. Ranking in 17th, we've got the Locust Heavy Destroyer. There were a few Necron kits on this list. Maybe not too surprising, given that they're a really popular faction and their codex came out not so very long ago. Locust Heavy Destroyers are a fun threatening unit that you might reasonably want in multiples with those big damage 6 guns. Maybe it doesn't hurt also that Necrons are also perhaps the single strongest army in the game right now. And one of their detachments, the Hypercrypts, could have these guys phasing around the boards to get some pretty guaranteed lines of sight. In 16th we've got another Land Raider in the Crusader and Redeemer. These ones aren't direct only, so do have their normal discounts. I'd say out of any of the variants, perhaps the Land Raider Redeemer seems to be the single most competitive for Space Marines. A great big charge bunker that you can roll up the board, deliver something to melee, and then threaten some fairly godly overwatch onto objectives with those terrifying Flamestorm cannons. As with the Chaos one, they've been sold out quite a lot due to excessive demand. It looks like at time of recording, they still are, unfortunately. Might be one of those ones that Games Workshop gets back in stocks sporadically until they make enough to get people how many they want. In 15th, we've got the Skitari Iron Strider Walkers. They can make either the Iron Strider Ballastari or the Sidonian Dragoons. They definitely feel like one of the units that sort of exemplifies the problems that Abmech have at the moment. Genuinely, the data sheet is actually kind of strong just by normal Warhammer 40k standards, though mainly because they're fast, tough, and cheap, 
and not really enormously threatening on an individual model basis, even if they can chip in some las cannons or taser lance type shots. Looks like this was the single best selling of the Abmech apparently, it's not really any big surprise that there don't seem to be as many kits for them on this list versus say Necrons that came out at the same time. I guess though if you're getting these then there's plenty of people that might want multiple, even if they are going to put a big dent in the wallet at $50 each. In 14th we've got our first Tau unit and there are a few more, Commander Shadow Sun is $55 or $47. There's certainly plenty of excitement for the new Tau at the moment, and Shadow Sun I'd say is really quite an easy model to use, lone operatives with some good anti-tank guns, a good full stop, and she also comes with some rather fun buffing rules with re-rolling some ones to hit and trying to farm command points. Quite a cool central character for the Tau, though I'm sure she'll be somewhat miffed that Oshovar seems to have her beat. Next up in 13th we've got the Adeptus Custodes Combat Patrol. In all honesty I was kind of surprised not to see more Combat Patrols on this list, I don't know if they're the sort of thing that might just get a few more residual purchases over time perhaps. Maybe they'd rise up the rankings if you looked at the data over a longer period where they're less likely to be outweighed by individual codex releases. In any case, the Custodies one seems to be the most popular of them currently. It is generally rated as one of the single best of the Combat Patrol box. Loads of points in the box. Custodies are a fairly popular faction and easy to start. And there might be a little bit of apprehension as to what this gets replaced with given that Games Workshop's been going through each of the combat patrols and literally without fail so far, making them worse on both points and discount in the box. Hopefully the custodians remain with a good combat patrol after this, though I'm a little bit apprehensive and I really wouldn't be too surprised if one of the squads gets replaced by a character model. In 12th we've got the Necron Immortals, $45 for 5 or 38 at Wargame Portal. Again, this does feel like a bit of a meta pick for the Necrons at the moment, a really quite staple unit for them in army list right now, often spamming their Tesla carbines in combination with some fun characters. They can be pretty popular with the good Illuminor Seraz as well to help out AP on the damage and defence. I feel like this might represent a bit of a trend from 9th edition Necron players. I feel like if you're collecting in the eras of the Indomitors and Recruit box sets, you're likely to have loads of warriors, but maybe not so many immortals. Plus I guess they do have the added draw of being able to be run as death marks as well, which are useful enough to have in small numbers to drop in and deep strike for secondary play. In 11th we're back to the Golden Boys with the Custodian Wardens. Seems that they're kind of similar popularity to the actual Combat Patrol box set, these being the veteran Custodians that are really quite good with characters at the moment, minus one to wound when they're in the squad and they have that big turn of feel no pain. I can see why they'd be one of the other most popular kits for the army. You get the bikes, the guard and the sisters of silence all in the combat patrol and these guys really are quite strong to have on the battle line. And it's still a kit that gets you loads of points in the box as well so it's not really a particularly feels bad on the value sort of sense. The terminators have been in a couple of past discount sets as well so maybe the wardens are ones that people might be lacking. Next up as mentioned Shadow Sun seems to have been beaten out by Commander Farsight himself. $65 from GW or $55 at Wargame Portal. He had really quite a fun miniature that released sort of mid last year. It's a fairly recent kit so not all Tower players are likely to have got a copy of him yet. And I think in general his miniature was one of the better received ones out there. I must admit I really love the way that he's gone for channeling the sort of samurai vibes here. I guess that maybe previews of the Codex have got people extra interested in adding him to the army. Seems really nice with the new pattern crisis suits. You could drop him in close in Retaliation Cadre, you have some actual counter charge and tank shock options, plus he gets free stratagems now, and he also got a lot more durable. I guess we don't know that his points costs aren't going to go up a bit, but I feel like he's generally just considered a really cool character in 40k, and not surprised that Tower players are keen to get a model. Next up we've got the Space Marine Gladiator tank, $90 or $76 at Wargame Portal. Again, feels like a bit of a meta unit here, given that they're really quite common in competitive lists currently. They do seem to be a staple in Ironstorm Spearhead in any configuration, maybe particularly the Gladiator Reaper to benefit from all those lovely sustained and lethal hits. And the Gladiator Lancer is just really strong anti-tank that's just good to throw into basically any Space Marine list right now if you don't have enough long-range shooting to take down armoured targets. Again, as with a few things here, I feel like there might be a resurgence in sales given that they were out of stock a lot in early 10th edition for people wanting to pick up Lancers. It does seem that they're available in good numbers again now though. In 8th, and it's more Space Marines in the Vanguard Task Force for the Phobos Marines, $140 or 126 at Wargame Portal. 
The Phobos Marines that were originally in the Shadow Sphere box set and then later in the Combat Patrol alongside that Impulsor. Since that time, they lost the Impulsor and then were relisted on Games Workshop as a direct only deal at a price that really wasn't all that far below the Combat Patrol prices for them. But compared with the other Space Marine Combat Patrols, I do think that they still hold their own. You still get quite a lot of nice miniatures here, the downside being that they're monopose ones, so you don't get the option to assemble as, say, Incursors or Eliminator Last Fusels. I'd argue that most of their units aren't really super meta right now, though Infiltrators are very good. Again, this one might be just a bit overrepresented here, due to again them being an online only thing, and them not being available at discount everywhere. Next up, we've got the Primarch of the First Legion. Lionel Johnson certainly made a splash when he was released at the end of 9th, and maybe not too surprising that with a big renewed interest in Dark Angels over the last few months and some other core cool miniatures, a few people are looking to pick up the Primarch to lead the force. It's pretty exciting for lore, generally people are pretty positive about the model. In terms of points per dollars invested, it's one of the best places that Space Marines can actually spend money alongside Gilliman to get points on the board for cheap, so all around quite a feel-good purchase for many there, I think. I certainly say it's not his in-game efficiency driving all this, though. His stats are scary on an individual level, but just not really worth 350 points for what he brings to the table, even if I guess some more casual lists might struggle to overcome the defensive numbers. Ranking 6th, then we've got some Primaris Hellblasters, $60 or $51 at Wargame Portal, a fun Primaris unit armed with plasma guns, a fairly easy unit to use with general purpose firepower and the ability to shoot on death. I think they're generally quite a good choice for newer players to add to a Space Marine army with an easy to use unit that's effective against most things and again has some of the best points per dollar for Space Marines in general. Kind of nice to get an entire squad of fairly elite Space Marines at the same price that Games Workshop often tends to sell 5 Space Marines for. Again, I wonder if Dark Angels might have boosted their sales a little bit here, given that they're kind of iconic for them with the plasma weapons, and pair pretty well with Azrael. In 5th place, we've got the Tyranid Neuralictor, $40 or 34 at Wargame Portal. This Tyranid Disruption and Infiltration Horror is one of their new releases for 9th edition, and interesting to see that this one's the single best-selling Tyranid miniature. I guess if there was any one unit to add into an army list to improve its strength, then these guys would certainly be one of them. They're pretty nice for the whole Tyranid's objective gameplay thing that they seem to be doing at the moment. Ideally hiding somewhere shadowy near some midfield objectives, making enemies test Battleshock to try and counter out their scoring abilities, and then from there, if they do fail Battleshock, you can get plus one to wound on those Battleshock units, or while being just a fairly tanky, annoying lone operative, they can still do a little bit of damage to lighter infantry. I'm guessing that there's more of these sold than Death Leaper, just because you can take these in multiples and you can't with Death Leaper. I can't help but think there's going to be similar sort of desirability for the both of them. Next up, and ranking in fourth, we have the Tau Crisis Battle Suits, $80 or $68 at Wargame Portal. They're the elite damage dealers of the Tau Empire, and probably quite a lot of hype around them, given that the new codex is coming out. Battle Suits have been greatly rejigged in that book, with them being locked down to three different classes of Battle Suits, with Sun Forge, Star Scythe, and Fire Knife. Still seems that that war gear change hasn't really been a particularly big issue to new players, I'd guess. And at the right points cost, they still could be a very threatening unit. They still seem fairly central to the army, with commanders buffing their smaller squads. Perhaps at a bit of a surprise, ranking in third was the Thunderwolf Cavalry. $60 or $51 at Wargame Portal. I'll be honest, I really wasn't expecting to see Space Wolves all the way up here. Though it still looks like they're selling kits at the moment. And if it was going to be any kits, I guess the Thunderwolf Cavalry would be the units that people might be most tempted to add in more of to a Space Wolf Army in 10th edition. Ever since that Stormlance Task Force came out, pretty much the strongest style of Space Wolf play has been pretty heavy Thunderwolf Cavalry in that detachment, getting access to things like Advance and Charge, a big damage defense stratagem, and all sorts of other things that benefit mounted units. I kind of wonder if people are maybe a little bit less apprehensive about these guys being phased out in the immediate future compared with some Firstborn. I feel like they're unlikely to receive a primary style update as fast as some other miniatures in the range perhaps. This one definitely seems like a case of gameplay driving sales though. I guess if you want to have a Space Wolf army, you're probably going to want a lot of Thunderwolves right now. They are just very efficient, fast and dangerous. Ranking in second is the trusty Space Marine Land Raider. $90 or $81 at Wargame Portal, Land Raiders do really seem to be very, very heavy on this list. Kind of interesting to see this one selling more than the Land Raider Redeemer or Crusader, 
I do kind of wonder whether it might be partly due to supply issues more so than demand. I guess the classic pattern can be relevant to certain other armies like Grey Knights and Custodes as well. Plus it's a bit cheaper, and it depends whether you want the big anti-tank las guns or the godly overwatch of those flamestorm cannons. Again, I suspect that this one is some rebound from land raiders being out of stock so much. And again, I wouldn't be surprised if they were overrepresented on this list for a wargame portal being a direct only item that gets discounted here but not elsewhere. Looks like there's still a couple of them in stock at time of recording. Wouldn't be too surprised if they fluctuate a bit like the Crusader and Redeemer though. Finally on top in the list is a unit that really doesn't surprise me too much at all. The Canoptet Race for the Necrons are massively in demand at the moment. $60 or $51 per 3 of them. And they do just seem to be the perfect storm of a unit that loads of Necron players are going to want to acquire. Necrons got really popular in 9th edition with the launch of Indomitus and loads of players getting into the game with that. During that time Wraiths were kind of underwhelming and not particularly central to the army. And then all of a sudden they suddenly get absolutely great. Pretty much the go-to frontline unit, really fast and tough, and pair with the Cryptek for the repairing and the 5 plus feel no pain type save, plus work well in one of the two best detachments in Canoptek Court. Just seems that if you were a Necron player and you wanted to add more strength to an army, these guys would probably be an easy pickup, and it really does seem that the sky's the limit with how many of these you could add to an army. I believe the winner of the Manchester Super Major recently ran a full 18 of them. It does kind of make sense in Canoptech Court, given the big re-rolls and extra boost they get there. Their popularity might not have been the best thing for them, though. It does seem that they're sold out currently in the USA. Overall, it's certainly been interesting to see what's been doing particularly well in terms of 40k model kit sales for an independent retailer. As mentioned, I thought it did make sense to keep the new release box sets completely separate from it just given that they're not really competing on the same level as their new miniatures that lots of people might want to just be picking up on release weekend regardless. For the new releases, the biggest seller was the Crute Hunting Pack box set, which was the only Games Workshop big box to drop in that time frame, which I guess makes sense really. That one was the best seller by a fairly spectacularly wide margin compared with anything else. Otherwise, the new releases in that period were the Dark Angels, the Solar Auxilia, and the Space Marine follow-up release to their Codex, Going down the rankings, it was interesting to see that Asmodai was actually in second, quite a lot of people liking to pick up the new miniature for the Master of Repentance from the Dark Angels. Then it was that Solar Auxilia Battle Group launch box, the Inner Circle Companions and Deathwing Knights. I feel like the Deathwing Knights would have been more popular if they hadn't already come out in the Deathwing Assault box set, maybe. The Plastic Malkador for the Solar Auxilia, the Space Marine Scouts and their Kill Team box being sold individually, Belial, the Ballistus Dreadnought and the new Dark Angels Combat Patrol with the Blade Guard and things. Overall, I did think it was pretty fun to get some behind-the-scenes knowledge. A big thank you to Wargame Portal for that. Certainly feel free to check them out in the link down in the video description if you'd like to buy things at a discount and also support all specs tactics. I think really for the general trend of the list, I was maybe a little bit surprised as to how both gameplay and new codex releases really seem to drive sales for their factions to a very big extent. I was certainly expecting those things to have an impact, though I was sort of expecting them to be at least a little bit more balanced, just alongside some other well-known to be popular kits out there in 40k, things like maybe the Demon Primarchs, or all of the good Combat Patrol box sets. It was interesting that out of the list, there was only really Thunderwolves, the Chaos Lamb Raider, the Inquisition 8 Bound and Sword Brethren, that weren't either from a codex that has already come out in 10th edition, or will shortly have one released. We do have Tau half released, and the Custodies on the way. In any case, looking forward to hearing your thoughts as to any surprises or surprise absences on the top sellers down in the comments below. Certainly looking forward to hearing some of your guys' takes. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, but I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.